Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's talk about something controversial, which a lot of developers might not like, but I think it is important to say it out loud about Prisma. So we tried out Prisma a month ago, we migrated. I think this is also something I have not discussed on YouTube very explicitly, but we have shifted from MongoDB to SQL, which is Postgres to be precise. And this Postgres is hosted on AWS. Well, that's for something for another video, but in the migration process itself, what we figured out was something very strange. If you take a look at this blog, which we wrote about Prisma migration, it just highlights a very specific area of the migration itself. And that's Prisma. So let me start from the very starting. It will be a long video. So feel free to sit back, grab something to eat, because I'm going to discuss a few of our very important learnings, which you should know as a developer yourself. So it started all the way back when we figured out in March that let's migrate away from MongoDB to SQL. And again, for reasons which I will discuss probably in some other video, we decided to go to planet scale. That was our first instinct. Let's move our database from no SQL to SQL. Number one, the database should be planet scale because again I'll, I'll tell you why that was the case the database was planet scale and second thing is two of our team members were very experienced with prisma they had used it in their personal projects so the technology was solid i for once had never used prisma as such i had used sql a lot but not prisma so i wasn't sure about that but we decided to proceed with prisma because that sounded like a very exciting technology according to their landing page and you know saying next generation node.js and type orm typescript orm supported sql and a very nice syntax out of the box. So the first pretty much roughly 20 days of the migration for the first 20 days, there was a lot of work. You have to like rewrite the whole schema. Uh, we also cleaned up a lot of data because Mongo allowed us to have a lot of, you know, with Mongo, we can have a lot of flexibility and indiscipline as well in a way foreign there are no foreign key constraints. So all of that could was, you know, the data was pretty much corrupted in production. A lot of parts of the data, which were automatically fixed when we moved to a SQL database, right? Now, 20 days in the migration, uh, we pretty much had wrote everything in Prisma, right? So we were using Mongoose as our ORM before that. Now we shifted to Prisma. Think of Prisma, initially what we thought of Prisma, is a wrapper around SQL queries, right? So if you're writing select star from some table where some condition, just like for MongoDB, we have a wrapper Mongoose, we thought Prisma is a similar thing that if you are writing a query like select star from something, we can just write it in a neater syntax and Prisma, it will give us a bunch of more things on top of the, you know, off top of the syntax. But that's about it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't go very deep into what we are doing exactly, right? Although it is an ORM, but it does provide us to run pretty much close to raw SQL queries, right? That is where we were wrong. Now, one of the first problems, which was not visible to us, which became visible on our first staging deployment was the size of Prisma. Well, you see, we are on a backend, which is hosted on AWS lambdas. And the reason for that is until we scale up to hundreds of queries a second, Lambda probably is better both in terms of cost as well as in terms of management, right? So we don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure, the underlying EC2s. This was great for us. This is great for us with the only drawback of two things. The first one is cold start. So a Lambda takes, you know, a few milliseconds or could go up to a few seconds as well in terms of cold start. And the second problem is that it has a 50 megabytes of hard limit on zip, which again is somehow linked with cold start because it has to copy all the source code, then it has to run and so on. Both of these points is not really a problem for us. Why? Number one is that because we receive enough traffic on the website that some lambdas are always warm, always available for requests to parse. Even if there's a cold start, this, a single visitor gets a two second cold start, but most of our pages, because they are statically rendered automatically, the backend feels the cold start, right? The next JS static generators feel the cold start, not the users themselves explicitly. And the second thing, that 50 MB limit, we never really hit it because our backend was pretty much small in size. Although it was growing, like at the time when we deployed it, it was close to around 30 MBs because of the whole node modules and everything. The moment we added Prisma, we saw that it shot up, right? It shot up around 60, 70 MBs and we were surprised, like what is going on here? Upon further digging down into Prisma and debugging like what's going on, we figured out that Prisma actually ships with a bunch of Rust engines, right? And if you open Prisma's documentation, which is linked over here in the blog post as well, you will find a very weird page, which is known as Prisma engines. 
Now this was weird for me personally because I was coming from a Mongoose ORM. Mongoose does not ship with any engine of any sorts, right? So for me, ORMs were supposed to stay in the JavaScript world itself for, for the most part. But Prisma, for some reason, uses these binaries, these engines, which are 16, 16, 17 megabytes of Rust engines, right? So this is what pretty much is happening. We send a query. That query is sent by Prisma to that 17 megabytes of Rust engine, which then communicates with the database, which then gets back uh, the result and which then results it, sends it back to the client. Now, I'm not the author of Prisma. I haven't even seen the source code of Prisma as such, but building an ORM, what does this engine really unlock? I'm not sure. Something which can be done in this engine, but uh, you know, cannot be done in JavaScript. I don't know except for very heavy computationally intensive operations, which I'll also come to in the next point. But this engine seemed like, you know, why is this engine existing? Like, why do you need a Prisma query engine library of 18 megabytes, where every megabyte of space is important for us in the serverless architecture? We were shipping an 18 MB of engine for what? Like, we, we didn't know that. So what we had to do in order to fix this is we had to trim out a lot of unnecessary unrequired engines so this prisma migration engine for example uh, we didn't need it or this on production so we just had a pipeline which would remove all of these engines from our deployment we didn't need introspection engine we didn't need the fmt binary we didn't need the query we did need these one or one of these two i don't remember which one but uh, we were able to bring down prisma's total deployment size from 60 70 mbs to 12 or 13 MBs in our final build. But yeah, this, this was like a non-negotiable thing. It needed this 12 to 13 MBs of binary to run on production, right? All right, so this is something again, something we managed fixing up, but the problems didn't stop. The next thing was, now, once we have done this, we now have to migrate our data from Mongoose or MongoDB actually to the SQL database. In this case, it was planet scale. And the reason we went with planet scale because again, the reason we went with Prisma is that their branding and their marketing is extremely cool. Planet Scale lists up a few things explicitly up front. The first thing they list up is that, hey, we don't support foreign keys. So they very explicitly say it up front that if you want foreign key support in this MySQL database provider, we don't do that. Now, the problem with Planet Scale is not exactly a problem with them, it's more or less an experience problem with us. The first one was that Vitus is extremely hard to set up locally and it comes with all sorts of, you know, gimmicks. So, so as to say, like the permission architecture in Vitus database is insane. Like how do we add a new user? How do we give it a specific set of permissions, a specific set of roles? And the reason we needed to do this is because we wanted to dry test, dry run the migration scripts itself. A script which takes data from MongoDB, parses it into correct formats and splits it into correct tables and then pushes it into the SQL database. We needed to run this locally right we wanted to test this multiple times to make sure it's stable it runs as fast as it can it just works right so that it doesn't crash on production because when we are doing this migration on production we need to bring the site down because we can't have a migration running on a live database this big right it's not a table it's not a column migration we are just pushing the full database from one provider to another provider and the quickest way for us and the fastest way for us and for users is to have a very small 10 minute, 15 minute migration window where we just instantly do everything and then bring the site back up. But for this, we have to be prepared. We couldn't do that with VTest as our database. So we just, you know, tried doing it directly with Planet Scale staging database, which was also fine by us. I mean, we just had to pay a little bit more, but that, that's fine, like as long as it works. Problem now, which we figured out with Prisma, is it's extremely low performant. It's extremely low performant. Now, this could be because of the configuration we choose this could be because of any number of reasons but what we did was because we were using planet scale we turned on turned on an emulated foreign key relation mode what's happening here is that prisma supports a very convenient option of saying that planet scale you know it says that planet scale does not allow foreign keys in a database schema and for those of you who don't know what foreign keys are it's almost like a integrity check right so you can't delete a row which is dependent on an another row you know by some constraint available so there's a transactions table and a user table what needs to happen is that you should not be able to delete a user if there's a transaction already right otherwise you will have dangling transactions in the table 
this is what foreign key checks on the database layer do it you know out of the box but prisma has a way to emulate this behavior so we turn this on and what we found found out i mean i don't know like if this is because of this behavior or it just works generally this way but prisma just burns the performance anywhere it's working it will have such a low performance you can't use it we figured it out when we were trying to dump our data from our database in nosql to our database in you know planet scale so maybe it is using these foreign key emulated checks on every insert i i think it has to right otherwise it can't know so for every insert it's opening a transaction it's doing a bunch of things maybe a couple of inserts then it's also getting the same record back all of this is happening with its Rust 17 MB engine and its main client is communicating with the GraphQL of the Rust and then Rust is performing an actual native SQL call, getting the data back. This was the first thing, the first blow, the first you know deal breaker was that it was opening a transaction on every single insert, which is a deal breaker because the moment we would start the script, our VTest instance on planet scale, a managed instance, it's not even like us, we are managing VTest, our VTS instance on planet scale will go down. We will see so many errors in planet scale's console that the transaction pool has been exhausted. I don't know, like we had to run a migration, right? And at some point we might even get a use case where we have to dump 10, 50, 100 records a second in the database itself. And if you are using it continuously, doing it for a minute or so, then planet scale Prisma, because it's using transactions, it will just bring your database, full database down. The next breaker was that in a few queries which we analyzed how Prisma is performing them, we were joining a bunch of table, a user table, let's say enroll in specific courses and a sales table. So we, you know, we can check that if they are enrolled in all the tables, all the fields they are saying. Prisma does not use SQL joins. In our initial analysis, what Prisma is doing for every single query uh, in our use case, it just sends a query to every single table, gets the data back and then performs join on its own which is a performance nightmare if you're working with tables in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of records more than that because now prisma might be doing so much expensive computation on its own it just doesn't make sense if you are joining a set of two very large tables and then you just want a couple of rows from that join table prisma has to get all the data and then you know show the results and this was in combination with a deal breaker with you know a database like planet scale because planet scale charges you on number of rows read right it's not even number of rows returned it's about number of rows read so the query planner inside planet scale if it reads for some unindexed thing or anything if it ends up reading a million rows in a single query it will charge you that and prisma on the other hand doesn't use joins so it can't use uh, the database doesn't know that you actually want to join so it can't optimize it further using its own query planner and of course the overall complexity of the architecture itself that you know you need a client which uses graphql to communicate to a rust engine which then does not use a sql native features and gets all the data back and then combines and does all the magic inside its rust engine and then sends the response back to graphql it's just too complex for a basic use case that you want an SQL adopter, right? You just want to write safe SQL, send it to the database, get the response back and that's it. That's all you want to do. This resulted in a huge, huge change in our full migration because of two things. The first one is that we eventually also ended up dropping planet scale because if you are not using Prisma's emulated foreign key mode, then it was kind of you know it's we wanted foreign keys basically because one of the things which we figured out that is our loss in the mongodb world was that we were losing a lot of integrity here and there so things which should not be deleted were deleted some rows were deleted so there was you know there were integrity issues in the database that means that foreign key constraint was a non-negotiable thing for us and planet scale because it doesn't support it up front and we don't want to use prisma then we have to change the database provider as well so we figured out i mean after looking at a lot of other players in the town we figured out the best way to move forward right now is to bring the database inside our aws architecture itself and we ended up using aws postgres this is aws aurora serverless v2 postgres so it's inside our vpc in the same vpc where our backend also lives and we dropped Prisma completely. We had to rewrite the full backend again. And this time we use something known as Kaisley. So Kaisley is not a ORM, it's a query builder. So what a query builder does, 
is two things the first one in our case because we have a typescript backend it provides a lot of type completions for us which is great to write code and the second one is that is that it keeps your code safe because it uses parameterized queries so there is no chance of having a sql injection of any sorts as long as you know you're not jumping into raw sql and passing input like that but yeah that's that's pretty much it the overall of our experience with prisma and planet scale i mean prisma has built a lot of great tooling we use prisma still we use schema written in prisma itself then we have adopters on top of the schema itself which converts it into type safe types types which provides us type safety in kaisley and uh, we use Prisma migration tooling as well, but what we don't use is Prisma at runtime at all. Prisma is not present in our code base at runtime level. Now Prisma has built solutions around the problems it created, right? So Prisma Accelerate, for example, I mean, of course, there are queries which are naturally slow, but if you're using Prisma, it's just like adding a bunch of latency and bunch of delay on top of your already slow queries and not on a factor of 2x or 3x it's actually probably a factor of 10 to 100x for even complex queries so it's solving a problem it, it created on itself data proxy again is a problem which prisma created because it's because it's using transaction on every single connection it's actually blocking the full connection so i mean i don't know about this like they have created problems themselves and they have created solutions themselves and it just doesn't make sense to me like why are they not addressing the core problem with Prisma which is listed down like their Rust engine size not using SQL joins and you know having a worse performance it's great to have a nice syntax but if that syntax results in such huge costs and performance issues then you might as well you know not use the technology itself for us the cons weighed a lot more than the pros which uh, Prisma was providing. So that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you learned something new about Prisma and about CodeDAM as well that we are on using now SQL databases. And yes, that's all for this one. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. I hope to see you in the next video very soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDAM's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.